Oh, a crisis? An insoluble problem? Major crisis? Both stepmothers won their names on the wedding invitation. Catherine adores her stepmother who more or less brought her up and she wants her name on the invitation. She wants it and her stepmother is not anticipating which is understandable. Since the mother is dead, not appearing next to Catherine's father, where is my stepmother whom I detest? It's out of the question her name should appear on the invitation but my father won't have his name on it if hers isn't. Unless Catherine's stepmother is left off, which is completely unacceptable. I suggested none of the parents' names should be on it. After all, we are not at all a sense. We can announce a wedding and invite people ourselves. So Catherine screamed her head off. I think that would be a stab in the face of her parents who paid through the nose for the reception. And particularly for the stepmother who has gone through so much trouble when she's even done her daughter. And I finally left myself be persuaded I, because she wore me down. I finally agreed that my stepmother, whom I completely detest, who is a complete bitch, will have a name on the invitation. Catherine, who was next to me, but who hadn't heard her side of the conversation, said, What did she say? I said, She doesn't want her name on the invitation with the one which is understandable. I'm not talking about that. What was it she said about the wedding? Nothing. You're lying. I'm not, Kathy. I promise you. She just doesn't want her name on the invitation with Ivan. Call her back and tell her when your son's getting married, you rise above your vanity. You could say the same thing to your stepmother. That's got nothing to do with it. Catherine shouted. It's me. I'm the one who's insisting her name's in it. It's not her. Poor thing. She's stuck personified. If she had any idea of the problem this is causing, she'd be down on her knees, begging for her name to be taken off the invitation. I call your mother. So I called her again. By now I'm in shreds. Catherine is listening to the extension. So, I telephoned my mother to warn her. Mother, I said, I've, I've done everything I can to avoid this. But we have absolutely no choice. Ivan's name has to be on the invitation. She said, if Ivan's name is on the invitation, take mine off. Mother, I said, please, I beg you, don't make things even more difficult. She said, how dare you suggest my name is there to float around on the car on its own. As if I'm some abandoned woman, below your hands, you'll be climbed onto your father's surname like, like a limpet. I said to her mother, I have friends waiting for me. I'm going to hang up and we'll discuss all this tomorrow after a good night's sleep. She said, why is it I'm always an afterthought? What are you talking what are you talking about, mother? You're not always an afterthought. Of course I am. When you say that don't make things even more difficult, what you mean is everything's already been decided. Everything's been organized without me. Everything's been cooked up behind my back. Good old you get. She'll agree to anything. And all this, she said, to put the old tin lid on it in aid of an event, the importance of which I'm having some trouble grasping. Mother, I have friends waiting for me. That's right. There's always something better to do. Anything's more bad, more important than me. <laughs> Goodbye. And she hung up. Ivan, my mother says, Up to now you've conducted your affairs in the most chaotic way imaginable. And just because out of the blue you've decided to embark on matrimony, I find myself obliged to spend all afternoon and evening with your father, a man I haven't spent 17 years, and to whom I was not expecting to re reveal my hip size and my puffy cheeks. Not to mention the one who incidentally, I may tell you according to Felix Perillari, has taken up bridge. My mother also plays bridge. I can see none of this can be helped. I mean, but on the invitation, the fun item everyone is going to receive and examine, I insist on making the solo appearance. Catherine, listening on the extension, shakes her head and screws up her face in disgust. Mother, I say, why are you so selfish? I'm not selfish. I'm not selfish, Ivan. You're not going to start as well. You're not going to be like Madam Mora this morning and tell me I have a heart of stone. That's what Madam Mora said this morning when I refused to raise a message. She's gone completely mad, by the way, to 60 francs in our country. She had the call to say everyone in the family had a heart of stone. And she, she knows very well about my poor Andrew's pacemaker. You haven't even bothered to drop him a line. Yes, that's right. It's very funny. Everything's a joke to you. It's not me. Who's the selfish one? If I is still have it, you still got to learn about life. Off you go, my boy. Go on, go on, go on and see your precious friends.